Hello, hello, hello. So this video is something that I have been meaning to do for a while, something I get asked about a lot. So hopefully it is helpful for you if you wanna learn how to create a scrolling website graphic within an image. To start out, obviously you need to have Photoshop, you need to have it open and go ahead and import in the picture that you want the website to be scrolling in and then also go ahead and go and import your screen capture of the website that you want to scroll. I have a Google Chrome extension that is called Capture, I believe. Uh, there are a few and what they do is they basically screen capture the entire scrolling website for you uh, just to make it super easy and then you simply download it to your computer, done and done. Um, I like to screenshot all of the websites that I do before I edit them and then after we create something awesome. So I have all of those screenshots and. Trust me when I say that plugin is very, very useful. So let's dive right in. I'm going to be using um, Photoshop Creative Cloud version. You can do this on older versions of Photoshop. Don't worry. I'm just warning you ahead of time because it will look a little bit different. Um, just kind of the way my stuff is set up probably. So first things first, um, I would recommend going in and resizing your image. Uh, just make it Obviously, you don't need an image that's 3,461 pixels wide. Uh, if you plan on doing this for Instagram, uh, there are sizes that Instagram prefers. I want to say it's 1080 by 1080. Don't quote me on that. I would use Google. Uh, but even if you're uploading this online, you don't want a huge image. So figure out what you're using this for, what an ideal size would be, and just go a little bit larger than that ideal size. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the height of this to 1080 just to make it a little bit smaller and the process a little faster for you. And okay, so we have that done. So first things first is I'm gonna go and I'm going to um, grab this image and I'm just cutting it. Oops, I have to select it. So I'm just Command A, can Command X, or you can do it the old fashioned way. Control if you have Windows. And <clears throat> so I'm just gonna now paste it onto my screen. Command T or Control T is going to let you transform. Hold down Shift when you're transforming so that you're not skewing your image. You're keeping it contained. Uh, and then just hit Enter on your uh, keypad. So I need to make this a little bigger. And don't worry if it's like a little bit bigger than your screen because we're going to be um, putting this image into an area so you don't have to worry if it's overlapping. So, all right, now I'm just going to hide that by clicking the eyeball over here. And now I'm gonna zoom in to my graphic and I'm gonna grab the polygonal lasso tool, which just allows me to draw straight lines for selections. And I'm gonna go in and select right above my screen, just a tiny bit, just so you're not getting that white glow uh, behind whatever image you put, especially if you put like a darker image. And once you see that little circle, you can click and it's gonna close it. Now I'm gonna bring my eyeball back up so I can see it and you can see the selection here. Down here at the bottom, there is a layer mask tool. It's a square with a circle in it. Click that. That's super simple, right? So basically we created a layer mask. We masked out everything around what we selected to hide it. So you're basically hiding everything else around your image, including the lower parts of it. So let me zoom out a little bit too far. All right, so now comes the animation part. We have our image, we have our graphic where we want it. Go up to Window and click Timeline. There are two different types of uh, options in Timeline. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're selecting Create Frame Animation. So go ahead and do that. Now you have your timeline with your frames down here at the bottom, super simple, right? So one thing that we're going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this to 0.1 seconds because that's basically just saying how much time there is going to be between each frame as you create this frame animation. And over here, so this layer is obviously your website screenshot. You're going to want to click this little link to unlock those two layers. You don't want those two layers linked together. If they're linked, that means that if you move it, it's gonna keep it masked in that square and it's moving that square around the page. So if we unlink it, then with your image selected, you should be able to move it around 
and it will keep that selection or that mask exactly where it is at that point. Hopefully that was easy to understand. Um, so we have unlinked it. We have our first frame. So now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create another frame just by hitting this little new icon. It's going to duplicate this for me. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that you have the correct frame selected. For your first frame, you want it to show the top of the website. Click here for the second frame. And here, you're going to want it to show the bottom of the website. So go over here, make sure that my image is selected. Make sure that I'm on my move tool. And I'm just going to hold down shift and click. Shift is going to kind of keep it in the same area so it's not kind of moving around the page for you. And I'm just going to keep shift clicking until I get to the bottom of the page. And there we go. So that's good right there. So now when I go between these two frames, you should see the top and you should see the bottom. Now go ahead and click on both of these with shift. So shift click both. And then there's this tween option right down here. So click that. It's like circles fading. Um, now you can put as many frames as you want. Basically, this button is going to put however many frames you have here in between your first and your second. It's going to do a smooth transition of that imagery. So depending on how smooth you want your video, the more frames is going to make it smoother, um, etc. So I'm just going to do 20. Now that put in 20 frames between my first and my second. So I have 22 frames down here. And if I hit play, you can see that it's scrolling from front top to bottom. It's doing the transition. So it's pretty simple. I told you guys, super easy. Uh, go ahead and you can change the seconds that you have between each. Like if I think 0.01 is too fast, I could go to 0 0.02 um, and play that. See if that's a little bit faster. See, my video is a little choppy and I don't like that. So I'd probably go in and add more frames in between just to make that smoother transition down the scroll. Um, another thing is down here, there's a little once with an arrow. It says once, three times, and forever. I know you can't see that on the video, but for example, I would want this to loop infinitely if I were to upload it to Instagram. I would want it to keep going over and over and over again so that people can see that process. So in that case, once it scrolls through, it kind of jumps too quickly back to the beginning, as you can see that. So I would go in, go to the last frame, and I would put this on maybe like two seconds. So now when I play it, it's going to transition through the website. And then at the end, it's going to pause for two seconds before it transitions again, giving your viewers kind of a moment to realize that it's about to repeat. <laughs> um, so that's that. And honestly, I could go back in. And I could shift click these and decide that I want them at point one sec point yeah point one um, and play it so it's a little bit faster, etc. Um, play with it, get it to the point of where you're happy with how smooth it is, how fast, how slow, etc. And then all you have to do now is export it. So there are two different formats you can export to. One is an animated GIF for web use. The other is a video for Instagram because Instagram does not play GIFs. So going into that, go up to file, export, and these are where your two options are. You have save for web, which is going to be how to make GIFs, render video, which is going to be for Instagram. So I'm going to go ahead and hit render video. You can choose the name, select the folder that you want to go to, make sure that your document size is roughly around what Instagram is going to want for that video. So I have it at 1080 height, um, which is good. And then I would just hit render. And it's going to save it. You're done. Just go ahead and throw the render of this onto your phone through Google Drive or Dropbox, however you do that, and upload it to Instagram. And you're done. So, woohoo! Now, if you are wanting to save this for online use as an animated GIF, you're going to have to go for, to save for web. And give my computer a second. It's going to think. All right. So up here, I'm going to just do my preset. I'm going to zoom out, make sure it looks kind of good and perfect. It also lets you play your, um, your loop down here. And once again, your looping, looping options are available in this browser as well. Once or forever, your image size is here too. So once again, if your image size is huge, keep lowering it, the lower your image size. In a lot of cases, the GIF is going to look a little bit 
cleaner and clearer and not have so much um, pixelization diffusion looking to it. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's that. Gif, perfect, perfect. So then I would just hit save, save it to where I want it to go under the name that I want and boom, done, have your animated gif. So that's it. I told you, super simple. It's just sometimes you need somebody to help walk you through it to make sure you're doing it right. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comments below. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.